sorry. All right, it's time to start the next session. I'm excited to hear this discussion on notes on click fraud, American story. And we've got Yamir and Peter from Avast. So please help me welcoming them. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to our talk titled uh, Notes on Click Fraud, American Story. Uh, the outline of our talk is as follows. Uh, at first, we will speak uh, about the distribution of uh, a, a, an exploitation chain. We provide uh, its main characteristics and we enumerate dropped binaries. Then we say a few words about the click fraud itself, about the actors involved. Uh, we explain types of uh, cli click fraud like automated clicking, search hijacking. Uh, then we, we mention uh, revenue models. Afterwards, we uh, describe experiments that we did on uh, infected systems. We, uh, we tried to, uh, try to vi visualize how uh, the simulation of a real user behavior is done by clicking modules. Uh, then we uncover uh, the dynamics of hidden fraudulent clicking. Uh, then we describe malicious models themselves and their artful technicalities. We describe uh, their network communication and the summary will follow. So the distribution chain, what's interesting about it? Uh, using big data uh, machinery behind vast backend, we grouped uh, samples by two characteristics. Uh, so samples that was brought by a Java, <laughs> heuristically, by a Java exploitation uh, uh, and dropped with a constant uh, file name notepad.exe in temporary directory. That's why notes, the word notes appeared in our title. And the second, that uh, only victims with IP from the US uh, was targeted. And that's why it's an American story. So uh, when, when, we, when we analyzed binaries in our group, we realized that only malware families serving ClickFord are involved. Uh, that was surprising because uh, generally exploit kits serve uh, va various families like uh, banking trojans, ransomware, remote access trojans. Another fact uh, was that no samples in our group uh, arrived before June 2013. So we, we approximate that date as a start of this uh, spe special distribution chain. Uh, digging a little deeper in our data, we found out that the very first initial step is a malvertising. And we were not the only ones who uh, spotted this exploit chain. Uh, and uh, here are the references. So uh, which were dropped ban binaries? Uh, this wor word map shows uh, a few families. The higher the font is, the higher number of unique uh, sample samples ar arrived in our group. So we see that blocks and tracker families performing search hijacking mostly were the most occurrent one. And uh, they were followed by Aluron, Lovelake, Blackbeard, and uh, Pigeon, and, and zero access also. So let's say something about click fraud and its actors. Uh, optional, there are some affiliates that uh, uh, distribute malicious samples for a reward. Uh, then we have two main parties, uh, advertisers and publishers. Advertisers wish uh, to display their promotional content. Their, they wish to deliver their marketing messages uh, to users. Uh, and uh, the, pu the publishers uh, sell their uh, displaying content on behalf of advertisers. Uh, the content is provided by blogs, news sites, surgeons, giants, and so on. Advertising network is a framework that coordinates ad placements among many publishers and advertisers. Advertisers buy a given amount of advertising from the ad network, and uh, this is optimized by uh, the usage of keywords. 
Well, the MI purpose is to express users' interests and optimize ad traffic. Uh, there are three ta main type of reward models. The first one, cost per impression, is charged whenever a browser loads their ad as a part of a web page. The main purpose is to make a brand recognition. The second part is uh, cost per click model. It is charged whenever a user clicks on an ad and the purpose is uh, to reach advertisers' website. And the third one is cost per acquisition and it is charged whenever a user uh, performs some predefined action like adding an item to shopping cart or filling out an online form. And the purpose is to reach an advantage of a competing products in case that, that uh, the impression is not uh, satisfying enough. So, uh, automated clicking uh, is done by modules that automatically clicks on advertisements. Uh, this is done uh, usually in a, a com browser window. It is independent on any user interaction. Uh, and uh, the, the module, malicious modules contain uh, user simulating threads that perform mouse movements, page scrolling, and occasional clicks. This type uh, of uh, uh, clicking is done by Pigeon, Oleron, Public, and Zero Access. The second type is search hijacking. This is not independent on user. Uh, malicious module extracts search and uh, search queries. Uh, the malicious module extracts uh, the keywords and use those to perform a separate query to a fraudulent search engine and then uh, the retrieved links are mixed with search results. And the redirection of users to the advertiser's website follows. This is usually implemented as browser extensions uh, em embedded in uh, malicious modules like Blaxa and Tracker. Okay, so let's see at this minimalistic, uh, minimalistic uh, scheme. We have an infected system as, as the first step, it asks for a domain search engine and keywords. Uh, those keywords are then applied and uh, a redirection chain uh, follows. So the click dilutes in the series of redirections uh, and with the final step, uh, which is advertiser's website. Every, every syndicate within this, this chain got his piece of cake. So let's talk about the experiments. Okay, let's look, about, let's look at the experiments which we did on the infected machine. So basically, in the background, there are running many processes which are invisible for the users, but there exist some tools which can reveal us what's going on. So the first experiment which we did was using the tool Win, WinSpector, which basically allows us to find the windows on the, which, which are running on the system and we located the windows belonging to Internet Explorer, Explorer process. The window was named Internet Explorer Server and we were able to monitor all the messages which were coming to the window and we are especially interested in messages which are related to mouse movements and this message is called VM Mouse Move and we were recording these messages for a while extracted the coordinates and we could see that the distribution of mouse movements is, has the uniform distribution. So you have the screen and basically the mouse is located like uniformly, randomly, like everywhere on the screen, which quite differs from the real user, which might be showed like in this example. We asked some, the real user to check his email and we can notice that most of the things are happening in the middle of the window when the user was checking the emails and with the, with the mouse he he seldom moves to the to the border parts of the screen another experiment which we did we wanted to see like what's really going on in these windows so there exist another tools in this case we used the uh, winlister program and this program can again show us all the windows which are running on the system and it gives us some interesting information for example in the last column it's marked in the red it says that there are some windows belonging to Internet Explorer in the third fourth column we can see that there are many windows which which are located in the same location which have the same size 
all of them have the same visibility set to no, which are hidden. And this tool also allows us to make these windows visible. And this is like this is the result when we made these windows visible. So at this particular session, there were 25 running browsers in the background, and when we made them visible and displayed them, displayed them like tiled in tiled, tiled horizontally, we got something like that. So now it seems that these windows are empty, or some of them are empty. But when we display these windows in cascade mode, actually they are not. In each of these windows, there are loaded some websites with blog posts or with some news or with some information, also accompanied with, um, with some um, advertisements banner. And also these windows usually scroll a little bit up and down. And after some time, new page is loaded. So that's how, how infected system worked. Uh, let's talk about the malicious modules. Uh, we, we found the uh, thread that we dubbed Blackbeard as the most interesting recently. Uh, it, uh, the, the string was found in the debug info. Uh, this thread, thread is generally re recognized as Lignoc by competing AV products. Uh, the most interesting technical aspects were 32-bit to 64-bit transition of code execution, various methods uh, of privilege escalation via exploits, and an invasive uh, persistence based on patching system libraries, namely RPCDL. Uh, we, we found uh, that this sample is uh, similar to a malware family called Bamitel that also performed click fraud, and it was active in years 2011, 2012. Uh, so, so the threat evolved over time. Uh, in the middle column, there is a sample, the structure of the sample from November 2013. So it came cast and packed as every other high profile malware. It contained as a first stage the, the downloader, which asks for MZ header free uh, dropper module and the, 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 as a second stage. And the third stage was the final payload, the click, uh, click modules. Uh, we use a vast uh, similarity search uh, to, to track backwards uh, the, the origins of this thread. And we found a sample from February 2012 that was kind of preliminary version. Uh, not only PE characteristics uh, were similar, but also the whole file path in the back info was the same. Uh, when we when we checked this the, the structure of Blackbeard uh, recently in April 2014, uh, we found out that uh, no stages were uh, present anymore, but uh, all code came in one block, uh, which was uh, compressed by LZO compression and encrypted by RC4. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, for the for the uh, Blackbeard sample from November 2013, uh, two-step downloads were performed. The, the step one asks for MZ-free uh, MZ -free dropper. Uh, the, the query uh, looked like uh, CNC server followed by script with four parameters. The first parameter identified the downloader, and the second parameter de decided the architecture of the download retrieved module. Uh, the, ste the second step was the communication with CNC itself, and uh, the network uh, connection was established by the initial post with many parameters, which uh, contained like uh, information about an infected system and encryption keys used. Uh, with, with this communication, the additional payload, namely the quick uh, modules, were obtained. Okay, let's look at some technical nuances. So one interesting thing about the module is that it mixes together in one binary 32-bit and 64-bit code. And basically, it starts, or the, the program starts with a short piece of code which decides on which architecture it was executed, if it was either 32-bit or 64-bit. And it does it, as, as this piece of code shows, that some big value is put to the register and if the register is either big or small, then it rotates and to the, to the left. And if the most significant value 
like is rotated to the least significant value, then the jump is either taken or not taken. So in this in this piece of code, it starts with 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 the code which can be which runs on both architecture. Then there is a piece of code which runs for 64-bit architecture only, and the last part is again only for 32-bit architecture. So one important thing is that this module needs to elevate the privileges because it needs to modify some interest, some important system files. And to do that, it needs to get take ownership privilege, which allows him to become the owner of the file. Then he can modify or add the ability to write to the file. Then it can patch it. And it can patch it. So we, we noticed that there were three methods of getting the higher privilege. One of them is the method using system preparation tool. The second one was the getting system privilege using CVE 2013-3660, which is local privilege escalation in when 32K sys driver. And the last one is using run legacy CPL elevated program. And basically, if everything is successful, the user or the malware is elevated to either administrator or the system and no UAC prompt is displayed. So the persistence is made based on patching rpcss.dll system file. Take ownership privilege allows to, like, allows to malware to become the owner of this file. It can then modify the access control list and in this file it locates some important structures and modifies some pointers which which describe or which specify the entry point to, to this library. The structure is named GA service entry table and kernel service main is the main entry function. So when the file is patched, this modification is done and it, it also adds a short stop. This stop loads the rest of the payload from one randomly named file in system directory. It reads the file, decrypts it, and loads the main module. In this screenshot, we can see like the original and patched, patched version of rpcss.dll. Basically, everything is the same in the structure except for the third pointer, which was modified. Let's talk a little bit about the clicking modules. The first one we described is the module called Pigeon. The name was given after the string in debug info. And it's the module which has like several, several exports, like start and stop. In the beginning, it hooks like many interesting or important system functions. And these functions are usually related to the situations which might happen in the background. For example, that clicking module loads the website which could start playing the music on display message boxes or something. And everything or this behavior should be completely avoided. So these functions are patched, so nothing will happen. After the patching, it modifies a lot of Internet Explorer settings in reg registry and start Internet Explorer window in embedding mode. Then it com contacts the CNC server, and it needs to get a list of the websites and links which it should visit. So the example of the request is on the slide. and. In the bottom part, you can see the reply. In, in the reply, there is one important thing that it uses the custom doorway search engine. In this case, it's called findeverything.info. And this search engine looks like this one. So basically, it's the website which contains a lot of keywords and some, some topics related to these keywords. So this search engine gives the reply. And the reply is an HTML code with the link plus some plus uh, short code in JavaScript, which performs the click on, on the link. After this is done, then the module starts several threads. Like some of them are for like mouse moving, as we displayed before. Some of them are for clicking. Some of them are for page scrolling up and down. And yeah. The, the other mo module which we would like to mention is module, clicking module for Alreon, which is very similar to the previously mentioned module, probably written by the same author because they share the significant portion of the code. And it, it contains like some extra information like, 
some checks like for the process in which it was injected or some other configuration information. Another module, which we, which is which we call Wowleak, it's named after the two files which are are dropped into in, into infected machine, wow DLL, which is the binary, and wow in which is the configuration file. Like like one difference from the previously mentioned module is uh, is that a lot of like like this uh, like this uh, keywords which are which were previously obtained from the command and control server are here hard coded in the file and basically from the lot of hard coded information the system randomly chooses these keywords and puts them as a parameters into the feeder which returns some some URLs which should be visited. The reply is given in XML format and from all the parameters the most interesting one is the click URL parameter which says the which URL should be opened. And also we mentioned a little bit about the second like clicking method which was like search hijacking and this is like completely different from the modules which we mentioned before and these are basically extensions for Firefox and Chrome. They are written in JavaScript, usually very small size, they use a lot of JavaScript obfuscation. In this short example we can show like the, the obfuscation which basically starts with like three short strings and with a lot of uh, with a few few string manipulations it creates the names of the main search engines like Bing, Yahoo and Google and later on it parses the par parameters which user was searched searched for and then it modifies modifies the result of of the searches all right uh, let us summarize what we have heard so we have seen that the entire exploitation chain was dedicated to click fraud modules uh, many click click modules if you think of uh, zero access as one of the most sophisticated uh, trojans performing click fraud then uh, <coughs> Uh, we, we can say that many of these click bots follow the path set by zero access in terms of complexity. Uh, another note is that the overall complexity is at least as high uh, as for typical banking trojans with a slight advantage for a victim because the direct uh, financial impact is not done to him. Instead, his machine is, used, is misused by fraudsters uh, c c click fraud negatively affects the whole online advertising environment and uh, especially uh, those who advertising uh, because they pay for ineffective traffic and th their returns on investments are decreased and uh, uh, we, we should also know that there's billions of dollars uh, in, in uh, online advertising so th this is a pretty good source for our cyber adversaries uh, to misuse it and uh, actually what was char characteristic for this whole chain was that uh, the binaries were custom packed with the high level of polymorphism and also uh, the distributors of these samples uh, was paying uh, for advertising service so actually we, we think we don't have any numbers but we think that uh, uh, this uh, this uh, threat uh, made a uh, high reward uh, or revenue for cyber uh, criminals. And uh, two last notes, uh, we have seen that uh, user simulation does not completely correspond to the real user and uh, infected systems uh, were slowed down uh, with a massive load of uh, hidden windows. So maybe it's time for questions and answers. Thank you. Do we have any questions for these guys? It was so thorough and interesting. You covered it all. <laughs> okay, could you join me in thanking Yamir and Peter for the great presentation?